Well, so hi, uh, welcome to this special webinar, um, which is part of the Festival of Coins event running on allaboutcoins.co.uk. I'm Matthew Hill, I'm the editor of the All About Coins website and also Coin Collector magazine. Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. Uh, we're hosting the second of two webinars today from our festival partners, NGC. Uh, you can actually view the first one that we did yesterday over on our website. Um, if you'd like to ask any questions, please use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and following uh, the, the presentation, we'll be putting these uh, to David. So uh, I'd like to welcome David Kehmeyer. Um, David's an authority on mint errors and modern minting technology and um, is speaking to us today from NGC's world headquarters in Sarasota in Florida. So uh, without further ado, here's David. Um, I'll give you the floor to discuss certification of your collectible coins, tokens, and medals. Great, thank you, Matt, and welcome everyone. Um, like Matt said, I'm Dave Kammeyer. I work here at NGC. I am a grader and finalizer and also the president of NCS. So I'd like to just go through a little bit about what NGC is, how coins are graded, and their impact on the market. So basically we want to go over why would someone use third party certification and why someone would choose NGC for this service. Basically, when any collector or any dealer and you go to buy a coin, basically there's many steps you have to take in order to buy that coin. First of all, you want to make sure the coin is real, authentic, um, that the coin has not been altered in any way that maybe it doesn't have any residue or anything that prevents it from being graded. Uh, you want to look at the grade of the coin. You know, is the coin worn? How much wear is it? Is it aesthetically appealing? Uh, next, you have to look at the coin and you have to figure out uh, what, what is the coin? What's the denomination? Is there a variety with the coin, um, et cetera? And then the next thing you have to figure out is if I purchase this coin, how am I gonna store this coin for long-term use and for long-term care? And along with that is also as far as value and insuring it. If you buy a coin, obviously it has value and you wanna make sure that that coin maintains its value and if it's ever lost or stolen, there's a way to retrieve it easily, hopefully. Authenticity. Austin, oh, excuse me. So whether a coin, the authenticity. The authenticity, especially when it comes to older coins or rarer coins, in this case, this is an 1875 CC US 20. So it's very important that a collector know that the coin is real, that the mint mark is not added, that the coin maybe has not been tooled or anything done to it that would affect whether the coin is real or not. And that's real important because like this coin, for instance, the 75 CC, this coin, if it's real, could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on what grade it is. But you have to make sure that the mint mark is correct, the mint mark hasn't been altered, and that the coin is truly what it is. And again, with certification, we take that all away because when it comes here, we have specialists in all different areas that will look at the coin and determine that the coin is indeed authentic. Grading a coin. Grading a coin basically involves looking at the coin and determining, first of all, how much wear is on the coin. Has the coin circulated? So if we take, for instance, classic coins, the amount of wear in the coin or whether it has any scratches on it or any defects will determine what the grade is. And also, again, we'd look at any alterations. A lot of times a rare date coin will have the date altered, such as the coin you see here, this 1981. So what we determine is, we determine that, again, that the coin is original, that it hasn't been altered in any state, that the coin's of the right metallic composition, and this, and when we do this, we do it on a non-biased level. So when we're looking at this coin, we're using all our expertise to determine that the coin itself is real. 
And then when it comes to actually arriving at a grade, again, we're totally neutral. And that when we look at a coin, we're taking into account all the different scenarios with the coin. We're making sure we're looking at the luster, we're looking at the toning, we're looking at the edge of the coin. We're looking at the front, the back of the coin. We're tilting the coin. We're making sure that we examine this coin thoroughly to determine, again, with a classic coin, how much wear does the coin have? And when you have coins independently graded, it just gives the comfort that this is the coin and this is the grade. And you can be assured that a number of experts have looked at this and it's based on a wide population of coins that we've seen in the past and the scale that we use, which is the Sheldon scale that we'll get to. Now, as far as grading, it basically falls into two categories, your classic coins and your modern coins, say from the 1960s on. So basically it all uses the same thing. It's the Sheldon scale, which is a scale developed in the early part of the 1940s that basically attributes where to a grade, and it also gives it a description. So if you start at the very basics, if you had a coin that, that you found that was extremely worn, but you could determine what it is, if you, you didn't have a date, you could barely see any descriptions on it, that would can be considered like a poor coin. In other words, you can still tell what it is, but it's fairly worn. And then we work up from there. Then we have a coin with good details, which means you can see all the details of the coin, although it has been circulated and it's heavily worn. And this goes all the way up to where you get to your almost uncirculated and uncirculated coins. So an almost uncirculated coin would be a coin that very circulated very little, has most of its original luster or it might be toned, and then there is very little wear in the coin. If you look at the high points of the coin, you will just see a little bit of rubber surface wear. Other than that, you would fall into the uncirculated category. And this is where it gets very particular nowadays, especially when it comes to Martin coins. So basically from 60 to 70 is an uncirculated coin, with 70 being a coin that has no visible flaws under five power magnification after it was struck. And again, for any classic coin, basically you're looking at grades maybe to the mid-level, maybe of the mint state to 65, maybe 66. But for the most part, it's a lot, can attribute to a lot of lower grade coins just because they circulated. Whereas when you get to modern coins, stuff that the, the mint are made by the mints currently, you'll most likely only have coins that are say seven, eight, nine, and 70, just because again, it's the way they're manufactured and the care taken now in order to get these coins to the collectors. What is a 70? That's a question that's asked a lot and everybody thinks that a 70 is a perfect coin. Well, it's technically a perfect coin if you were to just look at it with your naked eyes and actually study it a while. And again, it just can't have any post-production imperfections on the five power, which means that it can't have any visible hairlines in the fields or visible marks or anything that you could readily see basically with an untrained eye. Um, and as far as a 70 grade, a 70 grade can either be a coin that is mint state or a coin for circulation, or a coin that's minted as a proof or a special coin struck for collectors nowadays. And the proofs can be either a regular proof, a reverse proof or enhanced proof. There's many variations or specimen coins now but basically the grade 70 means that the coin doesn't have any visible marks on it. Now with grade, what's really great for the collectors and you never had it when you were first starting off when I did, is the fact that now we have many designations that we can use to assist a collector. And this, a lot of this is based on our experience and all the millions of coins that we've graded here at NGC since we started. Uh, a perfect coin that's up on your screen right now is this coin that has a plus and a star. Well, first of all, the coin is beautifully toned. It's, it's absolutely pristine and it has exceptional eye appeal. So a star designation means exactly that. It's a coin we come across that could be rainbow tone that's absolutely beautiful, that's a one in a million coin. It could be a coin that is 
proof light that normally doesn't come proof light, then maybe it's an early strike from the dyes that it just stands out from anything else for that date and denomination. You know, it could be a coin if it's a proof that normally doesn't come really ultra cameo, and this is a black and white super ultra cameo. So basically, what we're saying is if you see a star in there, this is a coin that's just exceptional IPO, and it's just special from all the other coins out there. And this is aside from what the grade of the coin is. The next thing that you see on this coin on your screen is the plus. So we use plus mostly for classic coins. And what that means is, so this coin is very, very close to the next grade. It's a really, really premium coin. It's not in this case an eight, but it's, you know, it's right there. It's the premium. It's again in the top percentage of all the coins for that grade. If you do go out and search for these coins or look in the population and find them, the coins with the plus are just these coins that separate themselves from that group and that grade, but just don't quite make the next grade. The next big thing when it comes to coins is description. And what that is, is that especially and when it comes to varieties or minerals or world coins, there are several different varieties, there's different types, and all this attributes to the value of a coin. And also nowadays, there's many, many different books and publications that find all sorts of varieties, and it's continued to this day for have new varieties added. A lot of people like to collect coins by varieties. So you get people who collect a large date, a small date, They'll collect it with a um, large letters, small letters. Some coins may be interesting that they have an overdate. Maybe in one year they punched the date and the next year they decided to use that die again, but you know, stamp the last date with the, the digit of the current year. So you get those varieties people collect. And also with varieties, there is value. There's a lot of varieties, whether it's a double die or a repunch mint mark or again, a coin missing a mint mark that adds an incredible amount of value to the coin. So when you submit a coin to NGC, you have the option to check off whether you want it um, looked at for a variety. Um, all the major varieties that are widely accepted and listed in books, um, such maybe as a 1922 no D nickel or a no S mint mark, those are attributed automatically. But if you go to the NGC website, you can see a list of the ones that you would be charged for. But for the most part, you'd want to be charged because those are great varieties that you'd want to have your coins attributed. But again, there's a great research online. You can go and you can also learn about different varieties. Uh, when people assemble sets, a lot of people will assemble the collection and decide, oh, wow, you know, there's a you know, a small and large date. I think I'm going to, I want to go into the small and large date too. So basically, the variety and the description is in a great enhancement and it's, it's a great attribute to be able to put on your coin. The next, the next absolute great thing about encapsulation in NGC is actually the holders are in. Too many coins I've seen over the years, you know, people have put them in little plastic flips and over time they've got PVC on them or they put them in paper flips or you know, it's, it's been something that has evolved over time, but basically went probably from the 70s having little cardboard flips. The 80s and 90s, you started with all the plastic and the PVC, and then there was growing concern of what the PVC does, because we can all see that. I have a little representation. I can see how, if you tilt it just right, you can see the coins all green or on a lot of the original packaging, like on this Franklin half, the coin has haze on it and that's due to the original packaging that it was in the plastic packaging over time it degrades and goes in the coin so the beauty of being able to get a coin encapsulated is two things one it's protection once it's sonically sealed in this holder you literally if you drop the coin and pick it up it's not going to hurt it you can take the coin if it's a valuable coin you can hand it to someone now who you know, would like to look at it with no fear that, you know, they could damage the coin by maybe squeezing it or scratching it. It's contained in this holder. It's, we use all inert materials of the highest quality. Um, it's, it's clear so you can see through it, see the beauty of your coin. We have scratch resistant protection if you need it. So it, you can just wipe it off like you do on your glasses. Uh, and there's tons of tamper evident that's in the holder itself. From the edge of the coin that has a, 
a, looks like a reading, same as a coin to prevent any tampering. You get the label. The label has all the attributes we talked about, as well as a lot of anti-counterfeiting devices in there. And basically all this is for, again, not only being able to have security, but you know that, you know, that coin holder has been tampered with and you could be assured that that coin in there is going to stay in there and it's going to be well protected. And if you put it in a place that's proper for that coin after encapsulation, then you're going to have a coin that's going to stay beautiful for the life of the coin and, and if you want to hand it down. The next thing is NGC. We have holders for virtually every coin made. We're talking from like a little tenth of an ounce coin all the way up to the new giant 10 kilo gold coins that they're making today. Um, this one you see in the photo right now is a five kilo coin that we just recently did. So again, you get the great protection of it. You get to show it to someone and then you know that no one can tamper with that once it's been graded and encapsulated and once it's been fully attributed. And what we just touched upon briefly is about insurance. So if you were to just buy a coin like in the old days and you had it in a flip or you had it in a little package and you take that coin and you put it in your safe and then some something happens or you just want to sell the coin. Um, the thing about it is, or if it gets lost, it's, well, how do you value the coin? Well, first of all, if you know there's no grade, it's hard to determine. And the next thing, if it was stolen, I mean, one coin may look like just any other coin out there. So how do you determine it? Well, again, if your coins were certified, if they were encapsulated, they get a unique serial number, as you see on the coin displayed right now. And again, so now if, you know, you can simply give the cert number to the police or to anybody to look for the coin, and you have the peace of mind knowing that there's a way to actually trace these coins, which is incredibly helpful. And also, if it was ever stolen, it's very easy with all the resources out there right now to actually find a price for your coin. It's been attributed, it's been graded. Everything they need to do to find value is there. All you need to do is find a proper price guide and there you have it. So why choose NGC to certify your coins? NGC with the largest third-party grading service. We've been doing this since 1987. We've graded over 45 million coins. We have a full staff and a special custom building here at our headquarters in Sarasota. We have security in our building. We have vaults in our building to secure everything once it's here. And in addition to that, we're very sensitive to what's been going on around the world as far as collecting coins. So although we started off in the US, now we have a presence all over the world, whether it be London, Munich, Hong Kong, uh, Shanghai, and we also have offices around the world, submission centers to drop off your coin, because we know now, because of the internet, because of what's being collected, it's a worldwide community and people are collecting coins worldwide. So we are now, not only have our main office with all our experts and expertise and security, we also have offices around the world. NGC has also grown as a company where we started off just being a coin company. Next, we span, expanded into conservation, which I'm the president of, because we saw the need out there for so many people not knowing what to do if a coin has BBC on it, not to know what to do if a coin has residue, or unsightly toning or dip residue. So most people would try to do it themselves and that usually ended in disaster. So we established a professional coin conservation company that someone now has the peace of mind, just like they have the peace of mind to send coins for grading, that they can send a coin in, that the coin will be conserved so that it'll maintain its originality, but also it'll be protected so that once it's graded and put into an NGC holder, it will maintain that security and that look for years to come. After that, we've added several other companies as the need arose. So we have paper money, we have comics, we have stamps, and the list just keeps growing. NCS, conservation. So as you can see by the coin we have on the screen and 
the coin that I showed you, which was this Franklin half. A lot of these coins, when they come in their original packaging, are in plastic or had been plastic, had been in plastic in the past. And most of the plastic in the past, again, since it was new, had a lot of PVC and the PVC interacted with the coin and with the environment. A lot of these environments, especially if you go to say Asia or any of the humid parts of the world or even here in Florida, um, humidity in coins, you know, they don't mix. What happens is you get many chemical reactions. You have this PVC that gets laid upon the coin. You get PVC that interacts with the metals. It can severely damage it, can permanently damage it. So what we do at NCS is we're able to use chemicals and treatments that allow us to take all this PVC off the coin, take residue. And what we're left with is a coin that has, again, the original surfaces again, and the coin is now neutral. So again, now not only is all the grime taken off the coin, but it also aesthetically will look better. And, and a lot of times this will cause it to obviously grade better. So, and it's a flawless process we have. Um, it's the same as submitting a coins very easily to NGC. You can submit them now on the same invoice. The coins, you can dictate them that they go first to conservation. So we'll have our evaluators, including myself, we'll look at the coin and we'll decide what if anything needs to be done to the coin. And then not only that, then we'll put a technique to use as far as what we're gonna use to actually take off this residue. And then once the conservation's done, once the residues are taken off the coin, once the coin is neutralized, we seamlessly transfer that for you to NGC for grading. So basically you adjust, you have no worry, you submit your coins, you let us decide what coins need conservation, they're conserved and they're gone to grading, they're graded, attributed, everything's done to them, they're put in the holder, so now you have a complete package. So now when you get your coin back, you have a coin you can look at, preserve, sell, whatever you want to do, but you know it's in the best condition possible from when you sent it in. Why should you trust NGC? Well, NGC, again, we give the buyer and the seller, we give collectors, we just give peace of mind to all the collecting community since they know that the coin on the, that the coin they're getting again was properly attributed it's a real coin it's properly graded um, and then once it's in the holder now since ngc is recognized worldwide and it's traded worldwide it's very easy for the collector or the dealer to be able to buy sell or trade that coin because again it has everything the unique, a unique serial number, has tamper-proof case on it. The coin's fully described, um, high-resolution photo with it, so you can see what your coin's gonna look like. It just makes it very easy now for, and it also makes it super easy now. If you're a collector and you're going to buy a coin, you know right away again what you're looking, what you're paying for, what you're buying, and really the only thing left right now is to find out in the marketplace what the coin's worth. We did most of the work for you. You're buying a coin you know that's genuine, you know what the grade is, it has been attributed, and now it resides in a holder that's tamper-proof that no one can switch a coin or tamper with it when you go to purchase it. Selling again, um, we don't sell coins, we just certify coins, we leave that up to the marketplace as far as the, as the price of pricing of the coins. Uh, but as you would understand in this day and age too, there aren't too many coins, especially in the U.S., that tend to trade raw or what we call, you know, uncertified. And one of the reasons is, is because again, uh, the, think of the lengthy process you have to do if you're a buyer and you go out there. You have to be knowledgeable as far as your expertise in being able to tell if a coin is real counterfeit, what the grade is. So buying it off a reputable deal that if you do buy the coin and it's not real, can you return the coin? So we take all that out right now. And basically all you have to be concerned about is the price of the coin, whether you're buying or whether you're selling the coin. Expertise. Again, we touched upon this. So here at NGC, we have 20 full-time graders, but not only do we have 
20 full-time graders. We have many experts in their field. My expertise happens to be in mint errors and the minting process and how modern coins are made. We have people, senior graders here, a lot of us you know, have 20, 25 years experience grading. We have graders here who are specialized, whether it be in silver dollars, I might be specialist in sovereign coins. I'm also specialist in a world modern Chinese coins. So basically all these specialists have graded literally millions of coins. They're familiar with all the different types of coins. The little idiosyncrasy that comes from each one, how to tell a proof from a mint state when sometimes it's very tricky. Uh, seen most of all the rarities you know, we consider ourselves like a funnel here. All the coins around the world eventually come here. So we're in your lifetime. You might see one great rarity in person. We've probably graded all the great rarities. So we really have a great baseline to not only determine a coin's authenticity, but again, when it comes to the grading of the coin, we have a wider range of coins that we've looked at that we can use as a measure for the coins that we grade every day. And lastly, about grading is that we were a team so it's not just one person in law although i'm a finalizer yes you get do get to say the final say uh, most of the time you'd be surprised i mean we're always really really close although you know coins are graded basically as you saw one point difference ms63 and ms64 a plus uh grading so long and have so much excuse most of us in there can actually be kind of grade like you know this is like a 63.1 we talk when we talk to each other about grading or a point two so we can actually when we look at a coin actually in our minds determine between say a three and a four each grade actually where this coin kind of fits in there so we've actually because our expertise have really become very we've, we've become very ex, not only experts but we fine-tune it and such that you know every coin we see you can be assured that it is what it is Another interesting aspect that we have now that we can use for expertise is we use all the modern day technology. So in the past, you know, you could weigh a coin, you could do different tests on it to see whether it was real. And nowadays we get added devices such as we use an x-ray fluorescence test, which actually tests the actual surface of the coin non-invasively, and it'll basically tell you what the surface of the coin is. So that's an incredibly helpful sometimes because when it gets to say pattern or prototype coins, a lot of times the reason it's a pattern or a prototype or a die trial is because these mints have tested out different alloys. And in the old days by doing a, maybe a specific gravity or doing some rudimentary testing, we were able to determine for the most part, yes, this coin is brass or copper or it's aluminum. But since we have more sophisticated equipment, we can actually find out the percentage of this, or maybe a coin that looked brass is actually bronze, but it allows us to be even more specific in our determination when we get these coins in. And it also is very helpful when it comes to fakes because it also gives you a heads up as to how they're making these fakes. Are they taking a base metal coin and plating it? What type of dyes are they using? and et cetera. So these are very helpful tools um, to allow us to determine, you know, the basics of whether a coin is genuine or not. The NG gu NGC guarantee is probably the strongest in the industry right now. And basically what it is, it gives you a guarantee, basically of what we said that, that you know, the coin is authentic. Um, it, it tells you in the grade, and as far as the grade is too, is we guarantee that we don't overgrade the coin, which means if you get a coin that you think the grade is too high, you can submit it to us under review and we'll examine that for you. And again, if there is a problem or if for some reason there was a mistake made, it will be corrected. And the, with this being corrected, a lot of times it's a monetary value. And again, there's no preset limit. So, it's not like we look at any specific coin and say, oh, this coin's too expensive. We review every coin in its own merits. And the guarantee is that when you get a coin graded by us, it'll be as stated on the holder. And another great thing about NGC coins, the guarantee, 
is that it's transferable, meaning that holder, when you buy that coin, if you assemble a great collection and you leave it for your kids, you can know that everything about that coin is the same as when you bought it, when you transfer it to your kids. It's still guaranteed that that coin is real, that the grade is real. It has the cert number on there and it's tamper proof. So when you go to sell that coin, you know, it's just, again, it's a very easy situation. We have a large group of great representatives, not only here, but around the world that are more than happy to answer your questions when you call in um, to assist you, whether it's about submitting, whether maybe it's about a variety or any question you have. I mean, NGC has always been a company that has a long-term outlook. Um, most of us started as collectors, continue to be collectors. So we think long-term, we want to create new collectors. We want to keep advancing the hobby, keep the hobby going. So the best way to do that is to have resources. And we, have, we try to have more and more of them, like this seminar, in order to assist people at answering their questions and helping them to you know, make it easier to collect and answer their questions. So we have a large staff of customer service representatives that if they, can't, if they don't know the answer right away, They'll get back to you and they'll ask us or we'll be happy to again to make sure that you're, you're collecting is a fun experience and that you when you deal with NGC it'll also be a great experience so you'll want to come back more and more and certify your coins. Um, also what I haven't touched upon yet is we also aside from this COVID pandemic right now NGC grades and attends most major coin shows not only in the US but around the world now and we do we have done in the past and we'll continue once this is cleared up on site grading around the world so at major shows you can have your coins actually graded on site when the show is being run and also we go to certain cities at certain times and we do on site grading to assist the dealers and the collectors so there's a quicker turnaround so that the coins can get back into the dealers and collectors hands. And we also have at all these major shows we set up and we have great customer service there again to also assist you, um, whether it's how, to, how do I submit a coin, where do I put the mint mark on the submission form, questions about grading, anything like that, we're always there to help and support the dealers in the collector community. I touched upon it briefly, and again, you can go online and look, because this is certainly not my expertise. But nowadays, there's just a plethora of online resources you can use. You can go online now if, if you're a novice, or whether you're just starting off, or whether you're a seasoned collector, and you buy a coin, you submit it, and you get it back as a 65, and you want to say, what's my coin worth? How many have, you know, how many have they graded in? MS65. Now it's it's a great research. You just go to ngc.com online. You go to the proper area and there you have a population report and it lists on there again everything we talked about. It lists a grade. It lists the amount of them that we have graded under each one of those. A total population. So if you want to know you know how many coins rare, say of a rare date if we graded in all grades and then how many have graded min state. How many fours, four stars, four pluses. And this leads to just a lot of different areas and a lot of possibilities. Obviously, if you're a dealer, it's a great resource in, in trying to price your coin. As a collector, it's a great way to start collecting coins. You may look online under the pop report and say, wow, there's not too many fives, but there's a lot of fours. Maybe I'll collect this series in four because you know that's more attainable. Or you want a super challenge and you're like, no, I want the best coins in this whole series, so I'm gonna shoot for the best po possible grades on these coins. So again, there's a tremendous amount of, of online resources. There's also a price guide associated with. So if you want to know, you know, what is my coin worth? You obviously can go online also to a different section and it will give you your coin price guide. And again, it's a great guide. It's not exact, but you know, there are so many ways now online to tell what the value of your coin is. But NGC gives a nice synopsis there. When you get a coin, maybe you inherit a coin or you're new to collecting, you get a grade and certified and you want to know what it is, there's a great resource there to find out. Then we come to the coolest part of all is the actual registry set. So 
when I was younger and we started collecting coins, of course, everybody knew everybody who had, you know, a fantastic collection of, you know, he owns the best sovereign set or he collects Morgan dollars or he collects Mineras. And he, so everybody knew of the person who collected a specific group of coins or an interesting group of coins. But as time went on and became a worldwide collecting now and it's done worldwide, it becomes harder and harder to interact or get to know some of these people. So now it's interesting, you can do this online by doing these, these sets. So you basically can sign up and you can start doing a set yourself, collecting coins, putting it online, showing what you have for coins. And then of course you can compete with other people. And then it's also a way to socially interact because you can, you can, you can, you know, interact with these people and say, you know, you have this collection, I do too, or you have an MPL, I have an DPL, or you collect proofs and I collect men's state. So it's a great way also to interact with other collectors and also to formulate collections, be able to tell people, hey, go online and you look, and you know, that's me, that's my collection. And it's it's just really fun. In this age of COVID too, it, it's just something that can, um, if you really get into it, take up a lot of your time, but a lot of fun. Online also, when we talked about security and the features and why NGC, you also have the resource now because everybody has a smartphone, is just to scan that coin in on your smartphone and it, it'll pull up all the descriptions of the coin. It'll ensure too that the coin you're holding is the actual coin that was certified. So it just gives you this extra protection in order to see that yes, that is the coin that that's being um, scanned. And also, again, you get access to the database. So once you scan in the coin, you can also find, hey, you know this coin, what's the population of it? How many they certify, et cetera. So it, it's a great resource. Also, if you go to ngc.com, you'll get all the latest announcements, news, everything. So if you um, wanna know what's happening around the world, if you wanna know, hey, that auction just, just went by, you know, there was some really interesting and you see coins in there, you know, what did they realize? What's the trend right now um, worldwide? You know, uh, China coins still hot, you know, the European coins right now, are they people still collecting, you know, coins from Great Britain from the Olympics or have they gone to, you know, anything else that seems to be a trend right now? Uh, everything's on there, maybe something sold for a record price, you know, maybe a rare Chauvin just went, but there's only a few now. And so, it's it's a great way and you, it also it's um a great resource to find out what's happening as far as you know if there will be future coin shows or if there's not coin shows is there going to be anything interactive that i need to look into are there any new coins coming up right now are there any new designs that the mints have come out with um what is ngc doing around the world are they going to be in my area soon are they get a grade soon is there going to be a seminar so Again, it's a great resource. Uh, I use it all the time myself to see what's going on, click on it every day and see what's going on. So basically, again, we've gone over, you know, why should I even use a certification company? You know, why should I certify my, my coin? What are the benefits? Why should I submit it to NCS? What are the benefits of conservation? Um, why should it be NGC? What do they offer? What are all the resources that are available to me through NGC? And basically everything you need to know is on our website again, and you definitely should check it out. Go through it just like anything, search around, go to the different areas you wanna say, hey, who are some of the graders? Go to that, what is, you know, wow, I may have a few paper money notes. It, wow, they grade paper money, what's that about? So again, it's just a, interesting resource and you'll also probably learn a lot. Um, so we've, we've had quite a lot of questions actually um, from attendees. Um, so I'll go through those in a moment. One question I had uh, is about the registry set. Um, seems like a really a good way to kind of build the community um, of coin collectors around the world. So how do you actually start that? You know, is it just a case of going on the website? Okay. Um, I believe it is. Again, um, um, if they go on to the NGC website, they look at that up. I mean, that's not something I've personally done, so I'm not sure of exactly how that's done, okay. but that's something I could get an answer to you for. Sure, for sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I believe, um, 
you just basically go online, you can sign up. I think you can create a name for yourself or whoever you want to be on that and go from there. Excellent. Okay, that sounds good. I'm going to check that out. Um, so let's start with the questions. So the first one, how does certification of my coins help with the legacy of the collection? So I guess this is um, kind of meaning for future generations if, if people are leaving their coins. Well, well, there's two things really as far as legacy. What's really interesting nowadays is when we first started what we call pedigreeing a coin, which means you put a, um, a name on the holder representative of who the owner was. When we first started out, we did it because it was extremely important for major collections. Yeah. Meaning if you got, you know, collections like the Eliasbergs who, you know, some of they had literally had one of every coin ever. And they had some of the finest collection, collections that you know people collected for 50 years. Um, basically, it was done that way. But then over time, of course, once these great collections are split up and other people right now continue to collect and add to it and you know maybe take a, a certain section of it and create a whole nother subsection. Like I said, maybe you collect and complete Morgan dollars, but now someone's taken that and making a complete collection of varieties with Morgan dollars. Yeah. So basically what happens is you're now able to put on that holder whatever name you want within reason, but you know, say I was, you were to put, if you're Smith, the Smith collection. So what happens, that would actually be in all the coins that you collect at Smith collection. So it's interesting if you wanted to pass them down, again, that just adds, you know, a little more to the collection knowing that listen this was pedigree to my father to my grandfather and again having your name on something you know could be brought down so if you in the past if you were to take you know say a coin that's certified with nothing on you could say well this was my grandfather so if you show it to a collector you know hey my grandfather collected look smith collection and now you know you can as as maybe the son of the grandson you could add to that collection and continue to have that smith on the label and, you know, if someone, most collectors is really passionate. And again, if they should ever want to exhibit it, you know, you, there you go. You know, you want to be proud. Look at this great set of complete sovereigns that I put together, you know, and a lot of times, you know, a person maybe because they're a collector over many years becomes very well known as yeah, a collector of sovereigns. And so now yeah. when you go to sell it actually can add value because, oh yeah, he was known, you know, he had the best collection. He had a great eye for sovereigns. So it's multidimensional as far as, you know, why someone put it on there. But basically, yeah, if you, if, you know, you put the pedigree on it, it's, it's, you know, it really says something about the collector. And again, it's about the whole thing when people do collect and they have in a collection, you know, they want to be known for, you know, this was my collection. Yeah. And I guess it's, it's also helpful um, for, you know, family members often find collections that have been left behind and don't know much about them. They may, you know, take them down to the, to the thrift store or something like that. Um, so having this well, certification just kind of cancels that out, doesn't it? Well, not only that, you added a great point too, because sometimes as you read, it's rare nowadays, but occasionally, you know, a super rare coin will find up in someone's drawer or, yeah. you know, and so what happens is, you know, that sometimes will only add, you know, to the value of the coin and add, and also it adds to the, you know, the whole provenance and the mystery of it, you know, you know, like if, if it's, we'll just relay, if so it's the Smiths again, and like maybe you said, you know, they happen to come across this in their drawer. Their grandfather had some old sovereigns and stuff. Come to find out one super rare. Well, again, it's now the whole history can be tracked because this is the coin. Whereas if you just have a generic coin certified, the only really thing you know about this is what's on the holder, the grade. You don't know any of the history behind it. But if you do have Smith or Smith collection on there, you know, you can look into that. Well, what was the Smith collection? I mean, go, wow, you didn't know about that? They found that in a draw. And, you know, it just, it just, and maybe, and then a lot of people also like to have it on there because it also denotes sometimes the authenticity. If you know this coin has been in this draw for 50 or 100 years, it only adds to, you know, people just find it even more credible that it's been there for so long. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Okay, um, so the next question we have, should the coins be stored in special rooms, uh, et cetera, even if uh, it's in the certification capsule? Yes, obviously you always wanna store anything in the most ideal collection. So basically we say, just store it in something that's 
low heat and no and low humidity. I mean, you don't have to go absurd, but you know what some people may not realize it's like I'll go stored in a, a safety deposit box or somewhere. And you know, nowadays, do you know they have control? Is it something that could be, you know, just left to room temperature and heated up and the safe doors left open all day? You're really unsure. But basically if it's low humidity and low temperature, it'll be fine. Again, you know, it's protected being in a hermetically seal uh, hermetically sealed holder yeah. but of course just like anything it is plastic so there is a, a certain degree of it's porous and you know you do everything you can so that you'll maintain the integrity of that coin so just by putting it in you know a safe place and I think just use some common sense you know you go to a coin show or something you you know you make sure that you know you don't leave your coins in the car on the way there for too long in the heat yeah. or you don't leave your coin in the sun or you know you and I are outside having a drink and, and I'll bring my coin outside to you in the heat and show, you don't want to do stuff like that. You mean, you want to keep stuff in a you know, reasonable environment. But with that said, again, you get the peace of mind that during transportation or if it does happen to be, you know, a wet place and you drop the coin, mm -hmm. then, you know, you can wipe it off. And again, you're going to protect it from the elements. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, what can conservation do to the value of my collection? Well, certainly it could make your collection not only, it could make it first of all, aesthetically look more pleasing. So in other words, if you decide that you're, like you said, they find it in a drawer and it's, it's a copper or silver coin and it has accumulated over the years, you may be, you know, a lot of dust and just because of the way coins are manufactured with oil and grease, maybe, you know, it has a film on the coin or something like that. Mm -hmm. So unless it's something that's still active, like a green spot, like PVC, we will still grade the coin at NGC. However, it may receive a lower grade because you know maybe the original surfaces, again, are deterred by the haze in the coin. Maybe it's a proof coin and you really can't see the cameo from the mirrored field. So by conserving the coin, you're gonna not only remove this, neutralize it, but you know, by making it aesthetically appealing, a lot of times it causes the grade to go up. Sometimes it can be substantial. Uh, in one of my points, like when you have like a coin that came out of an original holder that maybe is all toned over, you know, with the light film and you can't see that it even has a cameo, uh, not only is the grade important, but maybe the attribution that it becomes an ultra cameo, maybe it's really rare as an ultra cameo. So you take anything that's hidden on the coin by conserving it, it makes it now come to light. And a lot of times, obviously, by increasing the grade of the coin and the aesthetics of it, it'll make the coin worth more money. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, um, the next one is from another Matt. Uh, do auction trends influence how you grade them? Again, not at all. That's why I said when it comes to grading guarantee, we look at every coin uniquely. But with that said, what we do is, is we compare those coins with the known set that we've graded. So like I said, if you get I think say there's only six known of one coin and three have been graded. It really doesn't matter if that fourth coin comes in, whether you know the first three coins were valued at 100,000, this one's gonna be a million dollars because of the marketplace. Those co that coin is gonna be graded on its own merits. You know? Yeah. you know, first of all, is it authentic? You know, does it have any marks on it, whatever. We're gonna grade that coin just like we would, you know, any other coin. Every coin is graded on its own merits. And basically it's graded based on a comparison of coins of the, of the exact same type. So yes, that coin will be get compared to other rarities. If, uh, like I said, if there's, you know, a few known, we'll compare it to the ones that are known and how we graded those coins to mm -hmm. establish a baseline. And also by having graded so many millions of coins, when you grade tens of thousands of sovereigns, we have a better baseline to know how a coin falls in that grade. Whereas if you just have one coin, it'll be pretty hard. You'd have to take it and try to yourself, hey, where does that fit in You know, the, the grading line here? But yeah. since we do it a lot, it becomes fairly easy for us. And people kind of laugh at us. We're like, you know, how quickly do you arrive at a grade? And most of it's like, when we take a coin, we look at the all the, like the front, the back, the side, or whatever, literally in seconds, we have a baseline grade. Now, of course, after that, we have to make sure that, you know, there's no hidden scratches, but it's, it's pretty much a pretty quick thing that we do. Yeah, excellent. Okay, um, this is a, one that I'm sure lots of collectors 
I've asked you before. Um, how can I find out what my coin is worth? Again, the best resources, you can go to our website, you can go, uh, you know, download the app as far as, you know, has all the price guides on it. Another great thing too is, I mean, there's a million auctions nowadays. I mean, mm -hmm. like you just mentioned, you just heard that a coin sold for a record amount in the last auction. Well, you can also go back and look at every single coin that sold in that auction yeah. to really give you an idea. And with the internet nowadays, you have eBay, auction companies, you have coin pricing guides, NGC pricing guides. There's a plethora of stuff out there right now, and there's no shortage nowadays to find out what my coin is worth. Obviously, eventually it's going to be between the buyer and the seller. And again, it helps nowadays when you have a grade and maybe a star or a plus to also help you out because maybe it's an obvious you'll know, wow, this is not only a 63, but it's star. This is exceptional for any 63. So the NGC gives you all the tools as far as determining, you know, the grade and actually the value as far as what the actual value is as a monetary unit. There's plenty of places to go nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, how common are fakes in your experience? Do you come across many? All the time. All the time. I mean, as you know, um, China, it, there's lots of fakes that come out from China right now. Mm. It used to be that most of the time fakes were made because the coin was rare. It was extremely valuable. So people would make it because there was a, a lot of monetary value to be had. But nowadays, um, unfortunately, with the internet, with eBay, with auction companies, it's very easy to be anonymous selling a coin now. Yeah. So what happens is there's counterfeiting of everything in modern coins now. And, it, and like I mentioned to you, you know, now we have bullion coins, a kilo, five kilo, 10 kilo gold coins, 10 kilo gold coins probably melts for 350,000. So you can imagine that now the counterfeiters have an additional, not only may the coin not be rare, it just has a high value due to, you know, the metal that it's made out of. So there's a lot of modern day forgeries. Uh, unfortunately, because of modern technology, it's become easier and easier to create fakes because again of digitalization, there's ways to create coins digitally. So um, a digital process to make the physical coin. Yeah. So it becomes easier and easier and more and more fakes we see. However, again, we base it on, we have a, a large database of photographs, of images, um, of technical specifications that we've done. You know, every coin we photograph that comes out of here, if it's something that's rare, we do additional photography that has all the diagnostics, the characteristics that can allow us to tell the, the real from the fake. And, you know, aside from that also, um, Again, it's the knowledge of everybody we have here that's been working here for all these years. Uh, it's really funny, but for the most part, you know, a lot of fake coins, we don't have to do any tests. We simply hold our hands, we laugh, oh, look at this fake. Now, if Matt, if you were to tell me, you know, why is the coin fake? We could obviously go through the breakdown, you know, uh, wrong metal, the dyes are wrong. So we can give you all, but for the most part, with our trained eyes, it's pretty easy for us. With that said, um, a lot of the classic coins, the difficulty in determining authenticity, what if you have a very worn coin, which is typically done to try to erase a lot of the imperfections maybe in making it or the diagnostics. So it becomes a little more difficult, but again, by seeing the large amount of coins we have and having a big database in order to go through. And we also, I mean, we also take advantage of all the experts worldwide. You know, we will We'll talk to people who maybe are foremost experts in Mexican coins or whatever and get their yeah. opinion on it. So, yeah. I mean, we do everything we can to make you feel 100% comfortable that when we say it's real or fake, it's real or fake. Yeah, okay. So what, I mean, what tips would you give to someone um, who's perhaps wanting to buy something on, online and they're not sure if it's fake or real? Well, again, and that's a beauty of us. When I started collecting, you know, it's funny because, you know, when you first get into it as a pure novice, first of all, you have to even just, you know, go through the rudimentary basics is what's the sovereign look like? What are the mm -hmm. different types? Because you don't even know. Then within each types, you know, well, are there different mints, different mint marks? So it's a large amount of information that you first have to learn. And then you have to learn, do I even know to tell whether this coin is real or fake? then what are I great? So there's a lot of variables. So I say, if you're an, a novice nowadays, unless, you know, it's fine if you want to take some 
try to buy some raw coins inexpensive and maybe try to grade yeah. them yourself or find up their real and then submit them after to see how you've done. Yeah. Um, that's a great learning process because again, education is not free. You have to learn one way or the other. We learned the hard way in the old days because you know we bought a counterfeit coin or an altered coin or a coin that was overgraded. So we learned. But yeah. nowadays it's still great to go that route. And there's also, you know, many seminars that'll teach you how to grade and you can go there and learn. But if someone wants to start off, I mean, I'd say that's fine. But if you're going to do anything and you're not an expert in it and it involves, you know, large dollar amounts, obviously the safest way, almost like insurance is just buy a certified coin, yeah. you know, because then all the variables are taken out and the only variable you have left is what do I want to pay for the coin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so uh, I think this is probably the last question we, we've got time for. Uh, what do I have to do to submit a coin to NGC? Well, there's a couple of ways. Again, I'm not the expert. You can go online and look at this, but I know you can subscribe to be a collector society member. So that allows you to a lot of the stuff that's online as well as being able to submit directly to NGC. And then a lot of people do is you go through a, a authorized dealer, which is probably the best way. So these are dealers that, you know, we've checked out their credentials and they meet all our criteria to work with NGC. And you simply can go to one of those, drop off your coins, They'll take care of all the paperwork for you. They'll write up the submission. And basically they'll, if you're from the UK, they'll submit it to us. We'll get it here in the States. We'll grade it, conserve it, and send it right back to that submission center. And you can just go there and pick it up. Or I think, you know, they can send it back to the mail. So it's a really easy process. If you want to do a collective society, as great as if you're collecting, you're really, you know, going to start collecting yourself. You want to do the registry. You want to take advantage of everything then it's probably best to go that route and be a collective society. But again, the interesting thing is by going with the submission center, you also get to meet, you know, submission centers, dealers, people who've collected in and it gives you another resource to assist you in collecting. Yeah. Okay. I think we've probably got time for just one more. Sure. Um, how long does it take to have coins conserved? Well, basically I believe we have like a 30 day turnaround, but that's, again, it's just, it's, it's just that we have an approximation because it's the same, it's even tougher than when grading coins is when we conserve coins, basically it's, there's not a set amount of time. It's whatever is needed to take to conserve that coin. So whether it's a simple three-step process or a 15 step process, the coins are going to go through that process that it needs to, to be properly conserved. So while we try to stay in a timeline, again, that can vary. I mean, if it takes a little more time, then it will. But basically then after it's conserved, it has to go to grading and go through that too. But basically we take however much time is needed to conserve the coin properly. So mm -hmm. although most coins have the same process used because it's pretty rudimentary, there are times when it takes a long time to do a coin. And again, we're just going to take as long as we need to, to do it. But very rarely would you get past 30 days unless in the current situation now with COVID where you have all the stuff from around the world coming here because we're not doing any shows. You yeah. know, there may be a backlog because there's just a lot of coins and by people staying at home, they tend to go through their collections and now, hey, you know, I might as well submit this now. Now's a yeah. good time. So we yeah. actually have a large influx of coins right now. So, but again, it's something, feel free, contact customer service. They'd be more than happy to tell you what the current turnaround times are. Yeah. And of course, with our submissions, there's different tiers, which is different turnaround time. So, Listen, if you need it quicker, you know, if you pay an additional fee to have it expedited, I'm sure it can be done. We do the same with conservation. If you really need to have it back, you know, we can put your coin to the head of the line. Head of the line doesn't mean that it can be done in a set amount of time again, just you'll get to the head of the line. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, that sounds great. Well, yeah, I think we're just about out of time. Um, so thank you so much, David, for your time and for your- You're welcome, Matt, it was a pleasure. Um, as you can see, the. There are contact details here on the screen, so uh, the web address and the email if anyone else has any other questions. Um, the Festival of Coins runs until the 16th of October, so do come on over to allaboutcoins.co.uk. Um, there's lots of video guides and things there. Um, also, in, a, in an hour or two, we'll have a recording of this webinar, so um, in case you missed the start or anything, you can have a look at it there. Um, 
and that's it so thank you so much for your time david and have a great day You're welcome it's been a pleasure